Hello viewers, welcome to the third section, learning from data. We'll begin this section by applying machine learning on data using Java ML library. Then we would learn classifying data points using the Stanford classifier and massive online analysis. Lastly, we'll see classifying multi-labeled data points using Mulan. Let's move on to the first video of the section, applying machine learning on data using Java ML library. In this video, we will use Java Machine Learning Library to perform dataset import and export, clustering and evaluation, classification, cross-validation and held-out testing, feature scoring and feature selection. Java Machine Learning, Java ML Library, is a collection of standard machine learning algorithms. Unlike Weka, the library does not have any GUI because it is primarily aimed at software developers. A particularly advantageous feature of Java ML is that it has a common interface for each type of algorithm, and therefore, implementation of the algorithms is fairly easy and straightforward. This website has all the details regarding the library. We will be using the 0.1.7 version of the library. Download this version from sourceforge.net. The file you downloaded is a compressed zip file. We will need the Java ML 0.1.7.jar file to be included as an external jar file in the Eclipse project. The directory also has a folder named lib. By opening the lib folder, we will see that it contains several other jar files. These jar files are Java ML's dependencies and therefore must also be included in the project as an external jar file. We will be using a sample Iris dataset that is compatible with Java ML's native file format. Iris and other data files, however, do not come with the library's distribution. They need to be downloaded from a different repository. To download the datasets, go to sourceforge.net. Java ML has two types of datasets, 111 small UCI datasets and seven large UCI datasets. For your practice, I'll highly recommend to download both types of datasets. Click 111 small UCI datasets and you will be prompted for its download. You will see that there are 111 folders in the distribution, each representing a dataset. Find the Iris dataset folder and open it. You will see that there are two data files and one names file. We use the iris.data file. Note the path to this file, as we will be using the path. If you use any of the UCI datasets, you need to acknowledge and provide reference to the original work accordingly. The details can be found at this website. Now, create a project called Java Machine Learning and add these files as external libraries. Create a class with the same name. We will use a main method to implement all the machine learning tasks. The method will be throwing an I.O. exception. First of all, we read the Iris dataset using Java ML's file handler class's load dataset method. We'll need to import file handler and dataset from Java ML and file from Java I.O. The parameters for the method are the path to the dataset the position of class attribute, and the delimiter that separates the values. The dataset can be read with any standard text editor. The starting index of the attributes is zero, and the iris dataset has the class attribute as its fifth attribute. Therefore, the second parameter is set to four. Also, the data values are separated by comma in our case. So, the third parameter is set to comma. The content of the file is taken to a dataset object. Print the dataset content by simply passing the object. The partial output of the code will be like this. If at any point you need to export your dataset from the .data format to a .text format, Java ML has a very simple way to accomplish it, using its export dataset method of the file handler class. The method takes the data and the output file as its parameter. This line of code creates a text file in the C drive with the contents of the Iris dataset.
Now open the JavaML output file in any of the text editor. Partial output of the text file produced would be something like this. There are two key things to notice for the data file generated by JavaML. First, the class value is the first attribute, and second, the values are no more comma separated as they were in the dot data file, rather they are separated by tabs. To read a data file created, we can use the load dataset method again, but this time the values of the parameter will be different. If we print the data, then it will be the same output as we saw earlier. Java ML provides very easy interface to apply clustering, display the clusters, and evaluate the clustering. We will use the k-means clustering. So, create a k-means clusterer. Provide your data to the clusterer using the cluster method. The resultant will be multiple clusters of data points or multiple datasets. Put the results into an array of dataset. If you want to see the data points in each cluster, use a for loop to iterate over the array of datasets. Now, if we print this, we'd get a partial output like this. We can see that the k-means algorithm created four clusters from the iris dataset. Sum of squared errors is one of the measures to evaluate the performance of a clusterer. We use the cluster evaluation class to measure the error of clustering. Next, we simply send the clusters to the score method of the object to get the sum of squared errors of clustering. Let's print the error score. OK, so we get this in the output. It is the sum of squared error of k-means clustering for the iris dataset. Classification in Java ML is also very easy and requires only a few lines of codes. This code creates a k-nearest neighbor, k-n-n, classifier. The classifier will predict the label of unseen data points based on the majority voting from the five nearest neighbors. The build classifier method is used to train a classifier that takes the dataset as argument. After a model is built, we then continue to evaluate the model. We will see two evaluation methods that can be accomplished using Java ML, k-fold cross-validation and held-out testing. For k-fold cross-validation of the KNN classifier, we will use the classifier to create a cross-validation instance. The cross-validation class has a method named cross-validation that takes the dataset as parameter. The method returns a map that has object as its first parameter and the evaluation metric as its second parameter. Now that we have the cross-validation results, we can simply print them. This displays the true positives, false positives, true negatives and false negatives for each class. Cool! In order to do a held out testing, we need to have a test dataset. Unfortunately, we do not have any test dataset for iris. Therefore, we will be using the same iris.data file as our test dataset. But note that in real life, you will have a test dataset with the exact number of attributes as in your training dataset, while the labels of the data points will be unknown. First, we load the test dataset. Then we get the performance of the classifier on the test data using this code. Then we can simply print the results for each class by iterating over the map object. So the code prints the accuracy of KNN classifier for each class. Feature scoring is a key aspect of machine learning to reduce dimensionality. In Java ML, we implement a method that generates a score for a given attribute. First, create a feature scoring algorithm instance. We use the gain ratio algorithm. Next, apply the algorithm to the data. Finally, print the scores of each feature using a for loop and by iterating through sending the attribute index to the score method, 
one by one. So, the scores of the features of the IRIS dataset will be as these. Create a feature ranking algorithm instance. In our example, we will be depending on SVM's ranking of features based on recursive elimination method of features. The parameter of the constructor denotes the percentage of the worst ranked features that are going to be eliminated. Next, we apply the algorithm on the dataset. Finally, let's print the ranking of each feature using a for loop and by iterating through sending the attribute index to the rank method sequentially. Here's the ranking of features of the IRIS dataset. While for the scoring and ranking of the features we get information for individual features, we only get the subset of features selected from a dataset when we apply feature subset selection of Java ML. First, create a feature selection algorithm. We will use a forward selection method using the greedy method. In the process of selecting features, we need a distance measure, which in our case is Pearson's correlation measure. The first parameter of the constructor stands for number of attributes to select in the subset. Then, apply the algorithm to the dataset. Finally, we print the features selected by the algorithm. OK, the output subset of features looks like this. That brings us to the end of this video.